Okay, so we're at lesson 6.5. Last lesson was finding a common denominator using raised common multiples. Sometimes we multiplied our denominators and sometimes we found their greatest common multiples. So we're going to use that knowledge to help us today. Malia bought shell beads and glass beads to weave into a design in her basket. She bought one fourth pound of shell beads and three eighths pounds of glass beads. How many pounds of beads did she buy? So what are we going to do here? We're going to add. Add. What are we going to add? One. One fourth plus three eighths. Okay, so it says add one fourth plus three eighths. Write your answer in simplest form. Find a common denominator by multiplying with denominators. Now they gave you the strategy right there. <coughs> multiplying with denominators. What is four times eight? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. That's pretty huge, isn't it? Yeah. Use the common denominator to write an equivalent fraction with like denominators. So what are we going to multiply one fourth by here? If we two get 32. Eight. Wait, two. We got 32. What did we multiply it by? Eight. 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 Okay, now this is a different. Remember we learned to multiply our denominators and we learned to find the greatest common multiple. In this case they're wanting us to multiply the denominators and then one times eight is Eight. And what times eight is going to get me 32? Four. Four. Remember, if you multiply your denominator, you have to multiply your numerator. numerator. Okay, so three times four is 12. <coughs> so if we add eight and 12, what do we get? 20, 20 30 seconds. Okay. Now, if we're going to simplify that, what can we divide 20 and 32 by? Yeah. Two. What else? Four. Four. Four is going to get us to five eighths. If we did it by two, we would have ended up with ten eighteenths, and we would have had to have simplified again. Ten, yeah, ten sixteenths. Sorry. And yes, we would have had to have simplified again. So Malia bought five eighths pound of beads. Now we're going to try learning our other, using our other strategy, our least common multiple. Okay, so the least common denominator of four and eight, one fourth and three eighths is what? Eight. One fourth times one fourth. What times one, whoops. What times one fourth equals eight? Two. Two. So this should be two. And if I do it in the denominator, I got to do it in the numerator. Why do I keep saying that? To get in a brain. Get it in your brain because nine. A lot of times I'll have kids do this, and they forget to, that that's what they need there. Okay, so then four times two is eight, and one times two is. Now, what am I going to multiply? Do I have to multiply three eighths? Or is it already at? It's already at. It's already eight, so we don't have to do anything with it. And two eighths plus three eighths is? Five eighths. Five eighths. So again, only about five eighths pounds of beads. And she didn't buy five eighths pounds. She bought five eighths of a pound. So because she didn't buy a whole pan that pound, that's why we don't have an S on that. Okay, this is number one at the bottom of the page. The question was, how can you know whether your answer is reasonable? And again, you can use your estimate. One fourth would round to zero. Three eighths would round to one half. So zero plus one half. And since five eighths is close to the estimate, one half, the answer is reasonable. Okay, now we're at the example on the top of page 260. It says, when subtracting two fractions with unlike denominators, follow the same steps. You followed when adding two fractions. However, instead of adding the fractions, we're going to subtract. Subtract, subtract nine-tenths. Write your answer in simplest form.
So let's use our least common multiple. What's the least common ten. multiple? Ten. Okay. So do we have to do anything to nine tenths? No. No, it can just stay nine tenths. What are we going to multiply two fifths? Whoops. Two. Two fifths times something equals ten. Times two, two. over two. Two over two. Two over two. Two times two is four. Remember, we're subtracting. Nine minus four is five tenths. Five tenths. We probably just did this step. No. Okay, so you should have this written in your form there. Okay, it says describe the steps you took. What did we do first? We found the common, we used it to write equivalent fractions. That's That means that two-fifths is equivalent to four-tenths. Okay, if I cut a cake into five and I eat two of those, it would be the same as if I cut a cake into ten pieces and ate four pieces, four tenths of the cake. Did we have to write it? Okay. Then, so we found the, the common denominator, we wrote our equivalent fractures, fractions, and then we subtracted. Okay, so in words, our steps might look like this. First, I found a common denominator and used it to write equivalent fractions with like denominators, then I subtracted the fractions and simplified. All right, so the next thing is number two, there in the middle of page 216, it says explain how you know that the answer is reasonable. So what are we going to do with nine tenths if we were going to get an estimate? What would we round that to what benchmark? One. One. And what would we round two fifths to? One half. One half. Okay. And so, since the difference is equal to the estimate of one half, the answer is reasonable. Now, I'll type that out in word form for you. Okay, so here's what that might look like in words. I can estimate the difference. One half, one minus one half is equal to one half. And since the difference is equal to the estimate, remember when we actually did the problem, we got one half. One half, the answer is reasonable. Okay, now we're on the share and show at the bottom of page 260. This is problem number one. It says find the sum or difference and write your answer in simplest form. What is our least common denominator here? Twelve. Twelve. If we do the factors of three, we get three, six, nine, twelve. twelve. Okay, so this is what it needs to look on your like on your paper. Five twelfths plus one third. Do we have to do anything to 5 twelfths? Yeah. No, it's already in that form, right? But we do have to do something to 1 third. What are we going to do to 1 third? Take it times 4. Got to equal something over 12. So 3 times 4 equals 12. 1 times 4 equals 4. four. Because if we do it to the we do it to the top, or if we do it, let's use our math words. If we do it to the denominator, we have to do it to the numerator. 5 plus 4 is 12. Can we simplify that? No. Yes. What can they be divided by? What can they be divided by, each of them? 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. So when you do your homework, it should look like this. If you have to multiply something to get that common denominator, I would like to see that. Okay? Let's see what the next one is that they give us. One-sixth plus three-fourths. That's number three on your paper. Go ahead and do it. So I'm going to work this one really quickly. One-sixth plus three-fourths. Time something and we... Our least common denominator is 12. If you set it up like that, every time you'll get your steps in there. 2 and 3. Okay. 
9 tenths minus 1 fourth. This is number 6. Go ahead and do it. Okay, so 9 tenths minus 1 fourth. Our common denominator is 20. If I miss, list the multiples of 10, I get 10 and 20. If I list the multiples of 4, I get 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. So they both got to be set equal to 20. Uh, 2 times 10 is 20, and 2 times 9 is 18. 5 times 4 is 20, and 5 times 1 is 5. And 18 minus 5 is 13 twentieths.